Why don't we go ahead, let's start off with a word of prayer. Let's go ahead and bow our heads, let's bow our hearts, let's come before our Father in heaven. Let's pray. Father God, as we come to you now, we come boldly into the throne room of mercy and grace. It's where you are, Father, and that's where we desire to be right now. And as I know your angels have surrounded us, we know we are truly standing on holy ground right now because we know it's your presence that gives us fullness of joy, fullness of your love, and fullness of your peace. So Lord, I pray that you will have your way in this time right now as our minds and hearts are fully surrendered to you. We come to give you glory, honor, and praise. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray all these things. And all my brothers and sisters, we say together, Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, if you take a look at your notes, today the title of our sermon message is Christian Joy, a joy like no other. Oh, I love that topic. <laughs> well, let's read what the intro says there. It says, the joy that we as believers receive from our Father God is very different from the world's concept of happiness or joy. Let's look to the Holy Spirit to discover what God's joy upon us is all about. So after today, you're going to understand what the joy of the Lord is. Well, let me ask you something. If you were to ask all over the world who they was the country with the happiest people on the earth, who would you think they would say? Well, you would think, right? The United States of America, okay? After all, we are known by other nations to be a nation of great wealth and great prosperity. A land of plenty, right? With many opportunities for great success. And joy and happiness should be greatly evident in our lives, especially if you say you are a believer and you put your faith in God. But you know what? Joy and happiness, it seems like nowadays you don't see too much of it. You know, based on the statistics, there are actually many disheartened people living in our communities that are living lives of defeat and depression. Yes, even for the Christian believer. And I'm going to tell you, you know, in current polls, it was found that only 35% of Americans would actually consider themselves to be very happy. Only 35%. Talking about millions and millions of people, right? Only 35% would, would say that they're actually very happy. You know, depression affects more than 19% of the population of American adults. 19%. And anxiety affects, affects about 18% of the population, which is roughly, you know how many? 40 million people. 40 million people say they suffer from depression. <laughs> And it was also found that among the 10 richest countries in the world, the United States came in second when it concerned having the highest number of people diagnosed with depression. Kind of depressing to hear that, yeah? <laughs> but in France, right, they took the number one spot. They had the number one position of the number of people who suffered from depression. Yeah, France has that number one position. So it seems, right, according to these statistics right having joy or happiness is not always dependent on our circumstances or our financial status or whatever situation we may be in but according to the scriptures I'll tell you brothers and sisters as we will find out soon today great joy should be evident in every believers life do you believe in Jesus well you should have the joy of the Lord then you have no excuse because too often, I'll have a person, you know, give me a call and say, Pastor Ben, I am so depressed. My life is not getting better. It's only going to get worse. And you know what? I think I'm going to have a terrible year. I'm going, what? It's not even the end of the year yet, you know? And you're already going to have a terrible year next year. You know, we set our minds up for failure. And we got to understand, you know, sometimes what we say and what we think will affect what our circumstances will be, amen? And you gotta speak for the praises of God, amen? Because if you do, God will bring it. He will not disappoint you. God says in his word, I will never fail you. 
So we must trust in that. We must believe in it. So here's the question. Why should we as Christians have so much joy in our lives? A joy that's supposed to be like no other. It shouldn't be, should be compared to the joy that is of the world. Well, look at number one. It says there, because we know it is God's desire to bless his children with what? His very best. And that's what we got to understand. We should just have great joy knowing that that's what God desires for all those who put their faith in his son, Jesus Christ, right? That we know we should take great joy knowing that our God really loves us like how a parent loves his or her children. And truly, he desires to be with us. And we know, right, we become children of God when? When we put our faith in his son, Jesus Christ. That's what the word of God says. You only become a child of God. When you put your faith, when you say, I believe in your son, Jesus Christ, what he did for me on the cross, he suffered and he died for my sins. Then and only then will you become a child of God. That's what the scriptures tells us, you know. So we got to believe that. And just like how any parent would, you know, want to save their very best for their own children, you know, they would make certain that they are well taken care of even before their own needs. That's what a good parent does. Amen. And you know what? Our Papa God, He takes care of us very well, doesn't He? And He will continue to do so if you look to Him. You know, I gotta tell you, I remember when I was younger, maybe like a teenager, you know, I go to a party with my parents and I remember my mom, she would always make sure that I get a piece of the most delicious pie that was served that night. You know, if, if there wasn't many, she would get a pie for me, you know, not for herself. She would get it for either me or my brother, sometimes both, right? And, and sometimes I get the best cut of meat, you know, that night that they cut, you know, maybe a, a prime rib cut or whatever. My mom would make sure I get it, <laughs> you know, not about her or, you know, sometimes not even my own brother. <laughs> Don't tell my brother, <laughs> but she would do that, right? Why? Because she loved me, right? And, and, and she would make sure it would be reserved for me. And I got to tell you, brothers and sisters, I can see how God would be like the same way as a parent to us, only desiring the very best for us. Do you believe that? Well, you don't have to take my word for it. Look at his word and see what it says. Look at what it says here in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. Let's read it together. Ready? Go. On that day, the announcement to Jerusalem will be, Cheer up, Zion. Don't be afraid, for the Lord your God is living among you. He is a mighty warrior. He will take delight in you with gladness. With his love, he will calm all your fears. He will rejoice over you with joyful songs. Wow, does it sound like God takes delight in us? That he really treasures us and values us as his children. But from this scripture that we just read, yeah, it certainly sounds like that. You know, he is our God who has great joy in fellowshipping with us and spending time with us. Can you imagine how it is going to be in heaven? We're going to take walks with him. We can hold, hold on to his hand and just say, Papa God, you want to go for a walk? Wow. I mean, that is going to be simply amazing. I, I, I'm looking forward to that, you know, and taking the hand of Jesus. And we're going to walk through paradise together. Wow. And... But the thing is, right, it is so sad for some Christians who think of Father God as being a mean old grump. That's how some people believe, right, that he's very judgmental and is ready to pour out his wrath on everyone in sight, <laughs> okay? And for these people, right, perhaps they had a very strict upbringing in their church, okay, which had caused them to have a very fearful and even terrifying relationship with Father God and you know that's how I, 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 I see it you know I hear people are telling me no you're not supposed to smile you're not supposed to be happy you know especially in church you're supposed to be solemn you got to have a solemn face because you're in the presence of God <laughs> and you cannot make like you're all happy like that I go where did you read in the Bible does it does, does it say that you know and I gotta tell you, there's this story, right, about this little boy in, in a church, 
and he was with his mother in the Sunday service okay and he's usually a very good little boy quiet and so well behaved and he didn't cause any problems at all okay but every once in a while right when he's you know uh, standing on the pew at church he would stand up in the chair and he would turn around right and he would look at the people behind him and guess what he would do he would smile at them <laughs> anything wrong with that well you know his smile was so infectious right and soon everybody behind him was starting to smile right back at him and they would say oh look at that boy he's so cute and, and in a way they were a little distracted but they were just like so amused with this little boy and it was going fine until the mother realized what this little boy was doing when she did, you know what? You know what happened? She grabbed him by the ear, <laughs> twisted it a bit, and told him to sit down and remember, hey, you're in church. What are you doing? <laughs> okay. And this little boy started to sniffle and cry. And, and, and she turned to this little boy and said, okay, that's better. <sighs> and it's sad, isn't it, that many people have the impression that when we come to church, you got to put on a solemn face. After all, you're going to be in the presence of God. You got to take it serious. None of this laughter thing, none of this joyful, you know, spirited nature coming out. No, you can't do that. It's all about gloom and doom, right? And that there is nothing here to bring joy into your life, okay? Because remember, you're coming into the very presence of the Lord. But, you know, the truth of the matter is, if you go by what the scripture tells us, you know what, Father God, He wants us to have great joy. And He wants us to be blessed in every way. Can I hear, hear an amen to that? Amen. And you know that's what the Word of God tells us. And even His Son, Jesus, right, He wants us to be blessed in every way and to be joyful in every way. Let's look at what it says there in John chapter 16, verse 24. Let's read it together. Ready, go. Until now you have not asked anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your what? Your joy will be complete. What does it mean to have complete joy? I mean, to me, complete joy means you got no sorrow. <laughs> you got no tears. Even though you got problems, it don't matter because your joy is complete. Because you know why? You ask anything in the name of Jesus, God says, okay, you got it. If you ask with the right heart, you have the right desire, God, you can count on Him giving it to you. Amen? And you can trust that He will provide it for you if you really know Him. Right? And when we have a right relationship with Jesus, you know, He is so glad to bless us, whatever. Everyone, everyone say whatever. Whatever we ask for. When I say whatever, it's whatever. But you ask with the right heart, with the right motive, yeah, you can count on God bringing it for you. All right, so what is another reason for being so joyful as a Christian? Well, look at number two. It says, because we know that we have His Word to guide and direct us throughout our lives. Do you have the Word of God? Well, does it just come naturally to you when you say yes to Jesus Christ? Okay, the Word of God just downloaded into you. No, what do we got to do? We got Do we have to put in some effort? Well, let me tell you, we got to put in a lot of effort. I'm talking every single day. You grab your Bible and you not only just read it, you meditate on it. You ask the Holy Spirit, what am I supposed to do with what I just read? If you have a daily reading plan, and after you read it, you say, Lord, show me. How can I apply this to my own life so that I can become more like Jesus Christ? That is what will happen to you. You will experience the joy of the Lord as the Word of God just comes upon you each and every day. And you know what? One's got problems. I got problems. But you know, when the problem comes, the Word of God just gives you wisdom. Suddenly, you're going to know what God wants you to do. Not so much what you want to do. It's what God wants you to do because the Word of God is all over you. It's all over your mind. It's all over your heart. And suddenly, you go, okay, God, I hear you. I know you want me to do this, and I'm doing it because I want to be blessed by you. Look, the psalmist says in Psalm 16, verse 11. Let's read it together. Ready? Go. 
you make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Whoo, hallelujah. You know, when we choose to follow the Word of God, we will have much less sorrow, much less grief in our lives. Why? Because you're going to be less confused. Amen? We're going to be less confused of what we need to do when situations arise. Because you know what? Situations will come. I'm going to tell you, you know, you think everything is going so fine and dandy and suddenly someone says something or someone does something and totally messes up your day. Messes up your week, messes up your month, messes up your entire year. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I, I think you guys know what I'm talking about. But we realize you go to the Word of God. He's going to give you wisdom. Amen? And, and, and you're going to realize as a result, more joy will come into your life when you really eat of the Word of God. I'm not just saying you read it, you do it. Amen? And sometimes people say, but I don't want to forgive the guy. You know, you don't know what he did to me, Pastor. I said, well, I don't know, but the fact is God knows. And God promises if you do it His way, you will be blessed. Amen? So we got to hook onto the Word of God and say, yes, Lord, I'm going to do exactly what you say. This is what King Solomon had to say about our special joy that we have from the Lord. Look what it says here in Proverbs 16, 20. Read it with me. Ready? Go. Those who listen to instruction will prosper. Those who trust the Lord will be joyful. And if you listen to instruction from someone who is godly, or you listen to instruction from the Holy Spirit, that's the best, right? Guess what? You will prosper. You're going to have the goodness of God come forth in your life. And it says, those who trust in the Lord will be what? Will be joyful. You want to be joyful? Well, trust in God then. Trust in God means, you know, no matter what you are facing in life, you know He will be there for you. That's trusting in God. That's saying, no matter how bad my situation is going to get, I'm looking to God. I'm looking to God answers. I'm looking to God to help me through it. And... We know when we go to God just frequently each and every day, I'm going to tell you, suddenly the worries, the anxieties, they just start to go. And suddenly you kind of think about it. Hey, did I have a problem? You forgot about it. <laughs> it's because the Word of God has been speaking to you. I mean, it's that real, brothers and sisters. I'm going to tell you, I would be the worriest wart <laughs> you could ever imagine. I mean, I, I was like pacing to and fro. I was just like always thinking, okay, what's going to happen to me? And, and suddenly, you know, after I became a Christian, I realized I got to surrender it to God. That's what people told me. Ben, you got to give it to the Lord. I heard that so often. I didn't know really what it meant. But simple, just hand it over to the Lord. And when you give it over to Him completely, suddenly the peace of God will come upon you. And suddenly you will know He is for you. He's not against you. And you know the victory is about to come. Amen? You know, sometimes a person may have worldly intelligence. But let me tell you, it's no match for the infinite wisdom of God. You know, let me tell you about this minister. There's a minister, a Boy Scout, and a science professor. And, and, and they were the only ones that were on this small plane. Okay? So the pilot, right, came back to the cabin and said to them, I got bad news, guys. The plane is going down, but there are only three parachutes, and there are four of us. And the pilot added, you know, I should have one of those parachutes because I have a wife and three small children at home. So he took one of the parachutes and he jumped, okay? He jumped off the plane. And the science professor, he says, Hey, I should have one of the parachutes too because I'm the smartest man in the world and everyone needs me. So he took one of the parachutes and he jumped, okay? So the minister, now he turned to the Boy Scout and with a sad smile, he says, you know, you are a young lad and I have lived a rich life. So you take the remaining parachute and I'll go down with the plane. I believe this is what the good Lord would want me to do. And, and the Boy Scout just looked at him, right? And he says, Relax, Reverend. 
the smartest man in the world just picked up my backpack and jumped out of the plane. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and here's the thing, we realize, right? You can say, hey, you're the smartest guy in the world. Well, let me ask you, do you have the wisdom of the Lord? Because if you don't have the wisdom of the Lord, it don't mean nothing. I'm telling you, because before I came to know the Lord, I thought I had all the answers. I remember my brother shared, you know, his faith of Christianity to me, and I plainly said to him, I don't need your God. I'm perfectly fine myself. I can do it all on my own. I mean, I had that really arrogant, no kidding, I had that arrogant attitude. I, I praise God my brother never gave up on me. He's a pastor today, by the way, in North Carolina. And praise God, we love each other so much, and we hated each other at one point in our lives. But that's what the power of God can do, amen? When, when the power of God comes upon you, hey, it changes you from the inside out. And so I'm telling you, that's what can happen for all of us when we have the wisdom of the Lord. We make right decisions. We make good decisions. And our relationships are blessed. Amen? Look what it says here in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 13 to 18. Read that with me. Ready? Go. Joyful is the person who finds Wisdom, the one who gains understanding. For wisdom is more profitable than silver, and her wages are better than gold. Wisdom is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. She offers you long life in her right hand, and riches and honor in her left. She will guide you down delightful paths. All her ways are satisfying. Wisdom is a tree of life to those who embrace her. Happy are those who hold her tightly. So when we're talking about wisdom, of course, Solomon, he's talking about the wisdom that comes from who? It comes from the Lord. And if you hold tightly to the wisdom of God, what does it say there? You're going to be happy all the time. It's when you try to figure things out on your own, like how I really tried many a times, I end up more miserable than I ever was. I'm telling you, when you choose to do, do it the way that God wants you to do it, you will be blessed. Suddenly, things just start to happen. Your, your relationships that, were, had, that had gone sour, suddenly they're so sweet. <laughs> the person is so nice to you. And suddenly you realize, man, everything is working my way. Why? Because you chose God. Because you said, Lord, I'm doing it your way. Amen? Look at point number three now. It says, Because we don't have to worry or be anxious for anything, even when many troubles come in our lives. And that's a good reason to be so joyful. Okay? Look what Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 6. Read it with me. Ready? Go. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, what you got to do? By prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Don't be anxious about anything. You start to get a little anxious. What does it say to do? You start praying. You start telling the Lord what your problem is. And you thank Him immediately because you know He is going to do what He's going to do. He's going to give you His very best. Thank Him even before it comes to pass, right? Because you're showing to God you trust Him that He will provide His very best. And you know, the troubles we face in our lives, you can think of this as like, they are just like a pebble, right? All the problems, all the troubles you're facing, they're just like a little pebble. You hold it too close to your eye. Guess what? It fills your whole world and it puts everything out of focus. Isn't that true? You put something, you can't see, it's out of focus, right? You hold it at a proper viewing distance, maybe like arm's length, right? And it can be examined and it can be properly classified. Now you can see it. Okay, I can see what my problem is. But you know what? For the Christian, you know what the best thing to do? Is to throw this pebble at your feet so that it can be seen at its true setting. You know what it is? It's just one more tiny bump on the pathway to eternity. All there is, is just a little bump. Yeah, you may step on it, but guess what? It's just a little bump. Because you know what our final destination is, brothers and sisters? It's heaven. 
It's eternity with Father God. That's the promise that we have as Christians. Get excited knowing that that's what God has in store for you and for me. Eternal joy, eternal love. And man, there's nothing that can compare to it. Amen? And if you can trust in that, God says, I will bring that for you. <laughs> Look what this says there in James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. Let's read it together. Ready? Go. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Does it say sadness? No. It says great joy. Really? When trouble comes your way, praise the Lord, right? You get all excited. Well, that's what it says. But look what it says in verse 3. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. So is it possible that you can have great joy when troubles come, when you get bad news? Maybe from the doctor's office. Oh, sorry to tell you, you know, we got bad news. You got this disease. Oh, praise the Lord! Is that what we do? Yes. Well, let me tell you, you don't praise the Lord for the disease, right? You praise the Lord that you know He is with you. Amen? You know? And let's say you get a call from, from you know, a, a place you applied for work. And they say, oh, sorry, we, we, we decided not to give you the job. Praise the Lord! I didn't get the job! No, you don't do that. You praise the Lord. You get excited because you, you know what? God's got something even better for me. Amen? It starts with your attitude. You know, if you have a bad attitude, guess what? You're going to have bad circumstances happen in your life. But when you say, I trust my Lord, He will provide for me. I'm not going to worry about it. Guess what? God always comes through. I've seen that in my own life. When I learn to trust Him more and more, he shows to me, Ben, I am your God who never fails you. Amen? And it tells us, right, when, when you let your endurance grow, guess what? It becomes fully developed and you're going to have a perfect and complete <laughs> joy that you realize you're gonna, you don't need anything else because that's where trust comes in. And you realize when you can trust in the Lord that way, yeah, your endurance is going to grow and your character in Christ will be developed. You're becoming more like Jesus Christ. You have the character of Christ when you learn to endure. Amen, brothers and sisters? Well, let's look at the last point here, point number four. What reason do we have to have great joy? Well, look what it says here. Because we know that he, meaning God, right, is the only one that can offer us salvation through His Son, Jesus Christ. Now, only through Jesus we can be saved, okay? When we all have to pass from this earth one day, because, yeah, none of us will live forever in this physical body, right? We're all going to have to die one day. We know it is not the end. For the Christian, if you know the Word of God, we know it's only the beginning, right? Because even though we may die, we will continue. Our spirit, our soul will continue to live on with Jesus Christ. Can I hear an amen to that? That's His promise, that we get to live forever with Him, with Christ. Look what it says here in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 25 through 28. Look, look what it says there. Read it with me. Ready? Go. King David said this about him. I see that the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad, and my tongue shouts his praise. My body rests in hope. For you, God, will not leave my soul among the dead, or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You have shown me the way of life, and you will fill me with the of your presence. Wow. So we know as Christians we are saved. We are saved, first of all, from eternal damnation. And you know, a lot of people believe, oh, when I die, that's it. Pahana, nothing else. Well, I don't believe that. 
I believe according to what the Word of God tells me that we live on. Amen? That we will have eternity with His Son, Jesus Christ. And you know, it's, it's something we should just be so joyful about because we know this is the very promise of God. Look what, look what says, or yeah, Solomon, what he says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 11 to 12. Read that with me. Ready? Go. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has what? Put eternity in man's heart. Yet he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I perceive that there is nothing better for them than to be joyful and good as long as they live. So this, God has put eternity where? In our hearts. That means we embrace it as truth. We know eternity. How long is eternity, by the way? Forever. He's put that in your heart. He's put that in my heart. Say, praise God that you have eternity. No matter how bad life may get kind of earth, you got eternity to look forward to. Eternity, eternity in the hands of our Father God. We're going to fall right into the arms of Jesus Christ. I believe this. When we take our last and final breath, we're going to fall straight into the arms of God. And He's going to just embrace us and say, Child, welcome home. Wow. That's His promise, brothers and sisters. We get to look forward to that because that's His promise to us. And you know, we have great reason to be joyful because guess what? Like it tells us, right? We are saved. What are we saved from, Pastor? Well, we're saved, first of all, from eternal damnation because that's where we're supposed to go. But guess what? When Jesus did what he did for us on the cross, he suffered and he died for our sins. You know what? We were reconciled with Father God. And so we're not going to go to that place where it's very, very hot. <laughs> Praise God. We're going to a place where there is great joy. You know, we're not going to that place where there is much and torment and gnashing of teeth. That's what the Bible talks about. Instead, with salvation from Jesus, we are promised eternal love, eternal peace, eternal joy forevermore. Amen. Oh, okay, I want you to look at these next verses. This is how the prophet Isaiah and Peter express their joy about their salvation that comes from God. First of all, we'll, we'll start with Isaiah. Look what he says there. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 10. Let's read it together, what he says. Ready? Go. I am overwhelmed with joy in the Lord my God, for he has dressed me with the clothing of salvation and drape, draped me in a robe of righteousness. I am like a bridegroom dressed for his wedding or a bride with her jewels. Wow. You know, he knows. He's saved and that he's going to be forever in the arms of Christ. He's overwhelmed with joy. Are you overwhelmed with joy? When you think about the fact that you are saved, you should be because people who are not saved Guess what? They're not going to have any joy at all. Okay? They're going to be in torment. But look what it says here in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 8-9. through 9. Look what Peter says. Read that with me. Ready? Go. You love Him even though you have never seen Him. Though you do not see Him now, you trust Him. And you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting in Him will be the salvation of your souls. Wow! The reward for trusting in Him will be the salvation of your souls. And for Peter, right, he says he will rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. I mean, words that you can use to express your joy. And I, I just about the time I remember when my nephew was only like uh, like like two years old, and he loves cars toy cars and, and one Christmas right my wife and I we did we would get him a set of 100 toy cars this big box open it he looked at the cars then he looked at me and my wife ah! he just did 
Yeah, she just raises. He just ah, he couldn't say thank you, couldn't say anything. He just ah, his eyes just like so big, and he was filled with much joy. That's an inexpressible joy, and that's the kind of joy we're gonna have. Can you imagine? You're gonna be standing right before the Lord. You take your last and final breath. Boom, you're in the presence of God. Ah! I, I'm going to be shaken. I'm going to be filled with so much joy because I'm in the actual presence of Jesus Christ himself. I'm going to tell you, we all have that to look forward to. Amen? We do. If you really believe in Jesus Christ with all your heart, we do. And don't let anybody tell you, nah, you're not going to see Jesus. Nah, you don't really believe in God. Well, only God knows. Amen? If you know your heart belongs to Christ, you stand on it. And say, yeah, I belong to Jesus. Amen? Okay, let's take a look at the bottom line verse now. Look at Psalm 37, verse 4. Let's read that together. Ready? Go. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you what? The desires of your heart. What does it mean to delight yourself in the Lord? You know, it means to find joy, inexpressible joy, a joy that you don't leave any room for sorrow or sadness or disbelief. No, you have complete joy in the Lord. And it says, when you delight yourself in the Lord, He will give you what? The desires of your heart. That means whatever you ask for, He's going to provide it for you. Amen? Because you have the right mindset. You have the right thinking. And when you can find your greatest joy in the things of God, guess what? He will be your greatest provider for whatever you need in your life. And you're always going to be filled with the joy of the Lord. You're never going to be without. You can never say, oh, but I'm lacking this or I'm lacking that. No, if you have the joy of the Lord, God says, I will fulfill my promise and provide for whatever you need, whatever your heart desire. God says, I'm going to make sure I will fulfill that. You know, in Billy Graham's book, there's this book that he wrote, it's called Just As I Am. He writes about the time he and his wife had lunch in the Caribbean islands with a very wealthy 75-year-old businessman. And when, when they met, right, their, the, his eyes, this wealthy business, businessman's eyes, they were filled with tears. And, and he started to share with them felt like he was the most miserable, miserable man in the world. And he told them that he was about everything he could ever want in the world. He owned a million dollar yacht, okay? He owned multiple luxurious private airplanes. We're talking a billionaire, okay? And he had state-of-the-art helicopters and many fancy schmancy mansions, okay? And he told them that, you know what? I know should be happy in every way. I have great reason to be overjoyed. But in his own words, he says, to tell you the truth, I am miserable as hell. <laughs> That's what he told Billy Graham, okay? So the Graham, they prayed for him. They were hoping that they could point him to the love of Christ, that he would make a decision to receive Christ into his heart. And after their meeting, right, they made their way back to their little cottage village and they met up with a pastor in a local church and the pastor shared with them that, you know his resources were extremely extremely limited and that he was currently facing a financial situation that was causing hardship for him and his family but still he was full of enthusiasm and his love for Christ he then said to the Grahams you know I don't even have two pounds to my name but you know what, Billy? I'm the happiest man on this island. And after that, you know, shortly he left. Billy, he then turned to his wife and asked her a question that really didn't need an answer. You know what question he asked his wife? He asked her who she thought was a happier man. <laughs> you don't need to answer that. Obviously, the rich man had sought happiness through the possessions that he owned. The pastor, on the other hand, had a deep-rooted joy that was not based on what he possessed, 
but rather who possessed them. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, if you know Christ possesses your heart, you know what that means? It means the joy that is everlasting that will fill your heart. There's not going to be any void in your heart if Christ possesses you. You got a joy like no other. Amen? You know that God, He will not let you down. You know, He has a reputation to keep also. Just imagine, every time we pray, we tell people to pray, we pray for them, and every time, nothing happens. Well, let me tell you, I know when I go to God, I, I go to Him in the right spirit, the right heart, and when I pray, I expect God to do His thing. He will not let me. And I gotta say, every single time I see through, you gotta have faith to believe this. And the Holy Spirit will be there always to guide you and direct you. And truly, you will not be disappointed. Amen? Amen. 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 Yes. Okay, yes, I have busted Francis right there, but we are in time to buy one from or it's up or it's down, down to zero and everything is the way. Wow. You know my history? My drinking cure and all oh my mind. You had can cancer, you said? Wow. And it disappeared. Praise God. And, and, and I have to share something too. You know, someone just called just a couple weeks ago and, and told us that, you know, he had cancer also. And we, we prayed for him. We say, believe that God is your healer. Trust in him. Well, guess what? He went back to the doctor. They cannot find the cancer now. I'm not kidding you. I tell you things like this happen all the time. Someone, I can just tell you some, some other story real quick. You know, someone fell from a tree and they broke a lot of bones in the body and he wasn't getting better. And the doctor said, we don't know what we can do for you. And it's, it's only going to get worse. And, you know, the fractures were too severe. Well, it so happened. My brother and I, my brother was in town. We went to the hospital, prayed for him. And he couldn't move. He, it was like, he was like in great pain. You see the agony on his face. We just prayed for God's peace. We prayed for God's healing. Guess what? He was able to get out of his bed the next day. He's up. I'm telling you. That's why my faith is up there because I see it with my own eyes. What God can do when you trust in Him, when you believe in Him, God will answer in big ways. Can I amen to that? Amen. And you trust in that. You stand on no matter what people tell you, you say, but my God will do what my heart desire. When I trust in Him, when I believe in Him, He will answer in big ways every time. Amen? Just like you, brother. You know, Chuck, He healed you because He loves you. And that's why you have this joy that you cannot contain. Amen? You have this joy that is so real, it's so evident because... Guess what? He is a walking miracle. And that's what it is. You can be a walking miracle too. You got problems, you got situations, surrender it to the Lord. And let the joy of the Lord fill your mind, fill your heart, fill your entire being. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Why don't we go ahead and bow, bow our hearts. Let's come before our Father in heaven. Let's pray. Uh, Father God, we want to thank you, Lord, for the message spoken today. And Father, we want to know what that inexpressible joy is all about. That joy that is so intense. It is so real. Father, we know you put it upon us when we truly understand what it means to be a believer, to be a follower of Christ. And right now, with all our heads bowed, with our eyes, we may be saying, you know, Pastor Ben, I kind of realize that even as a Christian, I, I profess that I'm a believer, that I'm a Christian, yet... Sometimes there is no evidence that there is joy in my life. In fact, I walk around with my head bowed down a lot of the times, and it seems like I'm eating a can because I'm just so angry at the world. It just seems like I'm just full of sadness. Well, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, it doesn't have to be that way. The Bible clearly tells us if you are a child of God, you can walk in victory. He has that victory plan in store for your life. If you say, Lord, my life is all yours. I'm trusting in you with 
of my mind, all of my heart. He can renew your spirit once again. And you'll find yourself just fully empowered by the presence of God. And if that's your heart, you're saying, yes, Pastor Ben, I want to renew my relationship. I want to let him know that I'm going to trust in him once again. And I'm going to do things his way. And if this is the cry of your heart, you're saying, Lord, that is me. Lord, I want my relationship with you to be renewed. If that's the cry of your heart right now, can you raise your hand and say, that's me so I can pray for you. Praise God. Praise God. Anyone else? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I see your hand back there. Praise God. I see your hand. God sees your hearts. All right. You can put your hands down. Let's pray. Father God, you've seen all the hearts, all the hands that were raised, saying, Lord, that's me. Will you just do this right now? Just let your presence of your sweet love, your sweet peace, your joy, just fall upon my brothers and sisters, upon everyone right now in Jesus' name. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. Let your inexpressible joy just fall upon them right now. <gasps> Thank you, Lord. Praise you, God. More, Father. Let your joy just come. Your, your, your joy, your peace, your love just fill them right now, overflowing of your power and your goodness. Father, let them know, no matter what they're going through in life right now, as they hand it over to you, you're going to replace that. You're going to exchange that with your joy, with your love, with your peace. You're going to show to them power that is possible. That you can be the bird that will turn things around for them. It is impossible for you. As you close take place, they're going to see wonderful things take place in their lives as they know their lives are not their own anymore, but it belongs to you. Father, I praise you for what you have started in their lives, Lord God, and what you will continue to do. I thank you, Lord, for the many miracles that we're going to hear as they are so serious about surrendering their lives to you. Father, we love you so much. We give you praise and thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, for some of you, you may be saying, you know, Pastor Ben, I heard the word of God being spoken forth before. I've heard of this invitation, but I never gave my life to Jesus. You know, the Bible tells us today, not tomorrow, not next week. No, today is the day of salvation. Amen? If you know your heart is being stirred right now, don't wait any longer. Because you know what? The devil, he doesn't want you to make this decision. Because you know what? The only way that you are guaranteed salvation, you have to make a decision for Christ. Nobody knows when our final earth will be. No one. No one knows. God knows, right? You know, we could cross the street and you know, get hit, God forbid, right? Whatever. But the thing is, don't you want to be certain that you take your last and final breath, you're going to fall right into the arms of Father God. Well, you know what? We go, Let's make that certain today. We'll say this prayer in just a minute here. And if you know your heart is being stirred up, right? The devil is telling you, don't do it. No, don't listen to that voice. Say, yes, Lord, I'm going to listen. I'm going to receive you as my Lord, God, and Savior. And once again, let's, let's go ahead and bow our heads. Let's bow our hearts. And with all our heads bowed with our eyes closed, you're saying, yes, yes, Lord. I heard the word of God, and I want to make a decision for you today. I'm saying yes to you. I want to receive your son, Jesus Christ, into my mind and into my heart. And if this is the cry of your heart, you're saying yes to Jesus Christ. Can you just raise your hand right now? So I can pray for you. Praise God. Praise God. I see your hands. I see your hands. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Anybody else? Saying yes to Jesus Christ. Praise God. Praise God. You put your hands down. I want you to say this prayer. Say it out loud with me. Mean it from your heart. Just don't say it because you just oh, feel like, okay, it's a nice thing to do. No. Really mean it from your heart. And say, Lord, I'm serious about this prayer. And if you are, God knows this. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to see the changes that will take place. You're going to see God coming into your life. Just repeat these very words. Let's 
say it all together as a family. And if you raise your hand, please say it from your heart. Say, Father God, I need you. I give you praise for who you are. I believe in you. I believe in your son, Jesus Christ, who died for me on the cross. But on the third day, he rose again and he lives in my heart. I give you praise for that. And Father God, I confess that I'm a sinner. But your word says, if I confess of my sins, you are faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Oh, cleanse me now, Lord, and make me holy and pure unto you. So now I say this. So you hear me, Father God. So everyone can hear me. So I can hear myself. And so that the devil will know that Jesus Christ is my Lord. That I live for him. I live for him only. Father God, I thank you. For you have written my name in your Lamb's book of life. And I will spend eternity with you forever. In Jesus' name I pray. Everyone says together, Amen. Praise God. Let's give him a clap offering. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, why don't we